Hello, reporter room investigators. My name is Jessica Della Davies. I'm an investigative journalist. My job is to investigate crimes, potential suspects, and crime scenes, and show you how to do the same thing. Today, we are here because missing Sebastian Rogers is an autistic teenager. April is Autistic Awareness Month. He has been missing since February. Let's dig into this, and then I'm going to say hello to chat. So everything I'm sharing with you is my opinion. Opinions are not facts, so please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and don't forget to drop me a comment in the comment section below. Thank you to our subscribers, our mods, and our channel members. I'm going to thank you more properly in a little bit, but today we're gonna to discuss the timeline of what happened to Sebastian, this phone call between Chris and Katie Proud Proudfoot, that three hour phone call, Chris's, Chris Proudfoot's alibi, and I have enhanced the images, as I promised, of Chris Proudfoot's arms. You can look for yourself to decide if you see bite marks or not. So let's go back. Let's begin with the timeline. Um, at 2.09, Sebastian was at Costco with his mom, Katie Proudfoot. And um, so I... And then on Sunday, in the hours leading up to his disappearance, Sebastian went to BJ's wholesale, wholesale Club, went to dinner, this is according to Katie Proudfoot, and then went home with his mother. So according to Chris Proudfoot's sister, she says that they went, quote, shopping on Sunday, and then Katie and Sebastian went home together. So according to Chris Proudfoot's sister, Katie was the last one to have seen Sebastian prior to his disappearance. So Sebastian, just like Summer Wells, has disappeared from inside his own home. However, let's consider that three hour phone call between Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot. Did something happen that night? I think it's worth considering the possibility that Chris Proudfoot could have left his phone on, left it back at his camper, and that three hour timeline is very close to the three hour and 37 minute time that Chris claimed in the interview with Nancy Grace, which we're also going to look at a little bit today. Um, he claimed that it's very close to that timeline. So did he simply leave his phone on with Katie on the other line in the camper? Um, or were they on the phone and he was traveling? Um, law enforcement should, should be able to tell. I don't know if he just left it on in the camper, though. Is there video footage of him staying in that camper? Chris Proudfoot has had some uh, credibility issues. Allegedly, he was offered to take a lie detector test. He, first, he said he, TBI didn't want him to take one. Um, Nancy Grace offered for him to take it. He agreed to take it and then didn't take it and then claimed he had already taken one. So, which Nancy Grace says is a lie. So, at this point, Chris Proudfoot's alibi for this is his cell phone and possibly images if the campground has images of him on camera in not you know on the on the camera where he just didn't, simply didn't leave his his camping trailer that day so if he follows any true crime cases at all he would know that it's better not to take his phone with him now i don't know if law enforcement checked the gps on his vehicles I don't know if they checked the cameras in and around the campground where he was staying. And it's possible that the cameras prove that he was in the camper the entire time. And maybe this is why law enforcement is saying he does not need a lie detector. If this is true, what do you think? So we're going to talk about Sebastian's step in next. And then we're going to consider the abduction theory. And I'm going to show you enhanced photos that I enhanced myself of Chris Proudfoot's arms. There have been photos that have been circulating around the internet. I wanted to do my own enhancement. I have, and I think you're going to be very shocked at what I found. So Sebastian's step aunt, this is claims that he took that uh, Katie, Katie Proudfoot, Sebastian's mom, took his sister and her sister's daughter and her sister-in-law, that's Katie, and Sebastian, so the, the step aunt, this is Chris Proudfoot's sister, shopping on Sunday, and then Katie and Sebastian went home. So let's consider the abduction theory. So we know that supporting that Chris and Katie Proudfoot have both shared with us that Sebastian did not have access to the internet in their home. However, we have heard from Sebastian's biological father, Seth, that he had more freedoms, Sebastian did, in his house. So did Sebastian have internet 
access in Seth's home? And could he have engaged with someone who had nefarious purposes on the internet? If Sebastian was abducted, and I'm not saying that he was, it's most likely somebody in their circle. Now, this could be somebody that they know personally, but it could also be somebody in their periphery. We know from other missing cases that sometimes it's somebody that sees someone on social media. So could someone have interacted with him on social media at Seth's house? I also want to talk about Sebastian's shoes. So apparently at the Proudfoot home, Chris and Katie's home, they had a rule. And in, in their house, and this is the Proudfoot house, you had to take off your shoes before you entered the house. I can relate to this. I have the same rule in my house. So Sebastian's father, Seth, said that Sebastian would not leave the house without shoes on because of an incident with red fire ants that had happened in the past. So if all of the shoes that Sebastian wore were by the front door or in his closet, we also, then what does that mean? Would he have walked out the door? Seth says his biological dad says he would not walk out the door without shoes. So would he have just wandered out the front door with, with a flashlight on a keychain? Um, what we know from Katie and Chris, that there were no keys on the keychain. So if there are no keys on the keychain, how did the door get locked behind him? We know later that Katie added to her an original story of saying goodnight to Sebastian at 9 p.m. and now says that around 10 p.m. she heard a thud coming from Sebastian's room. Just having an additional memory in and of itself is not a red flag for me, but she said that he said he was all right. The fact that there was a thud might be a red flag. We're going to talk about security camera and doorbell footage, and I'm going to show you enhanced photos. Let me check in with chat see who we have here today. So glad you're here. Please say hello, share this on your socials, and please don't forget to subscribe. So hello, good to see you. Tell me where you're from and share your questions with me. DM says, what a sweet kiddo. Sadly, I don't think Sebastian is with us anymore. I do hope he's found safe and soon. I can, I, I, a lot of people feel the same way you do, DM. Leslie says, I think Sebastian was taken to Alaska with Chris's parents after what happened with his daughter and Nicole. Very interesting theory. Hey, Anjaz. Hey, Wicked. So welcome. So glad you guys are here. This is our head mod. If you don't know, this is Six Sense Amelia. She is our head mod for this. Hey, Anjaz. Okay. Tara says, this case hurts my heart and soul. Yeah, I think a lot of people have that feeling. Um, Anne says, I think... And it's just my thought that the couple had something to do with it. So she's talking about Chris's, Chris and Katie Proudfoot here, I believe. Um, yes. And his Chris, Chris's parents know what happened. So you think Chris Proudfoot's mom and dad know what happened? Are you talking about Sebastian's parents? Uh, Chris, the, the, the parents? I'm not really... If you want to clarify that, Ian, that'd be awesome. DM says, that bothers me. I don't know if the mom and stepdad did anything, but law enforcement would know that by now. Authorities have said that everyone is cooperating. I am stumped. Stacy says, I heard they send investigators to the place in Alaska where Chris's parents went. Okay, so they would have ruled out if he was in Alaska or not. I think that would be a very easy thing to follow up on. Glad you're here as well. Please, uh, yeah, Stacy, thank you so much. Please give this a thumbs up. Help me out with the algorithm. Hey, Jane, good to see you. Okay, Charlie, thanks for the thumbs up. So tell me where you're from and tell me your questions. Tony says, can they tell if you're on a phone call? That is such a great question. That is really a very important question, in my opinion, in this case, because I think it would be, if you studied true, true crime at all, or just even knew some basic information about technology, you would know how much information law enforcement can get from your cell phone. If you have any apps like the Strava app, which is a exercise app, it has a GPS that they say is better than a car GPS. So if you have that app on your phone, if you have TikTok on your phone, that also has a GPS app uh, portion to TikTok. So there are a lot of different apps, not just those two, but those are just two that are on the top of my head that if they were if that phone, if you knew anything about apps and, and, and geofencing and, and uh, law enforcement's ability to track you using your cell phone off cell phone tower pings, then to me, the most, if you were going to try to get back from 
your workplace to your home. And I'm not saying that Chris Proudfoot did this. I'm just saying this is a uh, speculation. Um, then to me, it would make sense to leave your cell phone on with Katie on the other line and make the drive. If, and again, this is just speculation. So speculation, trigger warning on that. I am just sharing uh, my opinion and opinions are not facts on this. So, um, so can they tell if you're on the phone call? I don't know. If one person is on the phone call and the other side is just playing the TV or music or something like that, I don't see really how they would, Tony. So yeah, great question. All right. Stacy says, I wonder what Katie did in the three hour call where Chris was Chris telling her what to do. I don't know. DM thinks the thud was a red flag. So for those of you that aren't familiar with this case, let me just do a very quick synopsis. This is going to be uh, credit to uh, News Nation. 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers has not been seen since he disappeared near Nashville on February 26. He vanished from his home in Hendersonville, ten Tennessee, shared with his mother and stepfather. One theory is he wandered off in the middle of the night with a flashlight barefoot and alone. Uh, but with every day that passes, there are more questions about this case and what might have really happened to this little boy. I haven't seen him in over a month. I've been out here looking for him. It doesn't make a lot of sense. His car, his shoes are still by, well, still by the front door. His For those of you who aren't familiar with the case, I'm just doing this very brief overview. It's it's literally, literally one minute long. This is Seth Rogers. This is Sebastian's real father. Which was there. His phone was in the kitchen. It just didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And I still can't figure it out. It, it's crazy what's going on in this case, honestly. I, I've never seen anything like it either. Uh, what ends up happening here is web sleuths and YouTubers have, in this case, it would seem, taking the situation too far, where now, uh, you know, they believe some people are involved in nefarious activity, possibly the parents, possibly uh, the United Cajun Navy, and uh, there's threats being lodged. And I've actually and that is too far, if if that is true. I I have not. This is what the United Cajun Navy claimed. I am not convinced that this is what happened. Um, they claimed that they were being interfered with during their search. I don't know if they were. They weren't. Um, but my experience with with internet sleuths is that you guys have been instrumental in multiple cases. Let's start with a couple of cases that come to mind. First is the Gabby Petito, Brian Laundry case. If it wouldn't have been for Red, White, and Bethune, YouTubers who found Gabby's van on their dash cam, Gabby might not have been located because of the vast area that law enforcement was having to search. So it was YouTubers that found her van. In the case of Kylan Schulte and Crystal Turner, it was uh, Sean Paul Schulte reached out on Facebook and crowdsourced because Mo, Moab police said they, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, the police in the, the local sh Grand County Sheriff, not Moab, Grand County Sheriff's Office said they could not find Kristen, Crystal, Kristen, Kylan or Crystal, sorry. And she went out and she found their campground. She found uh, one of the women and then called law enforcement and they came out and found the other one. So again, solved by social media. Uh, Riley Strain, um, also a lot of eyes are on the case because of social media. So in my opinion, social media has been really instrumental about getting Sebastian's name out there. And, uh, you know, I really give a lot of credit to you guys uh, for, for staying on top of this case. So I'm just going to push back gently on Jennifer. No shade to her. I, I think she's, uh, you know, just saying what, what she thinks. And, and she's just talking about what the United Cajun Navy claimed and I don't know if their claims are true or not true. I wasn't there, but I have not seen any evidence that, you know, of, other than their claims. So they claimed that they were getting um, harassed, I guess. But I don't know. I haven't seen any evidence to, to really back that up. So let me know what you think about the United Cajun Navy. Um, should they have pulled out? Should they have stayed with the search? And I'm going to show you enhanced photos of... Um, the bite marks. I did it myself. Okay, so 
let's talk about the security cameras and the motion light detector that never triggered, that never triggered. So this is according to Seth, this is Sebastian's biological father. He said that the reason the land the landfill was searched was because the regular trash men, the men that picked up the garbage said, quote, it felt a bit heavier than usual. So I think that's very, very interesting. The trash felt a little bit heavier than usual. I do think that's concerning. So this is what triggered them to search that landfill early on in Kentucky. I also think it's worth noting that it could be law enforcement was concerned that the trash truck could have inadvertently hit Sebastian in the dark unknowingly. You know, he's he's not that big. He's 120 plus pounds. Um, so they could have just inadvertently not even realizing it in a big truck like that. So they, they looked to make sure and search the Kentucky landfill. So I want to go back to internet access for a second, and then we are going to go into the, the photographs, but I want to talk about internet access because it would be worth finding out if Sebastian did have internet access at anyone else's house, including his uh, biological father. I'm not, I'm not blaming anybody if they gave him internet access. Did he have internet access at school? A lot of kids in that age group do have access to the internet. Now, Sebastian did have autism, so he is special needs, but this could have interacted with somebody, but could he have interacted with somebody on the internet? The other question I have is, were images posted of Sebastian on anyone's social media? So maybe even though he wasn't on Facebook or one of the socials, was anybody else posting him on their Facebook page or TikTok videos or some someone, you know, from school or a family member that somebody in their periphery could have become obsessed, could have been stalking. What do you guys think? So we don't know if there were any firearms in the house. I'm sure law enforcement would have gone through the Proudfoot's house and accounted for them if there were any at all. And there's been a lot of questions as to why Katie Proudfoot would be willing to dis not to disclose the type of vehicle that she drove. Well, I want to just clear that up because I had questions about this too. I did some digging. She works for Brinks Security because she said to Nancy Grace that her employer would not let her say what type of vehicle. Well, I can see if you work for bring security, which transports valuables, then maybe she really was not allowed to tell us what kind of uh, vehicle she drove. So I'm going to put that little nefarious piece to bed, but there are other, lots of other red flags. So being working for a security company that transports valuables, they may not want their employees to divulge what type of vehicles they are using. This is just my best guess. So does Chris Proudfoot have an airtight alibi or not? He might, if the campground cameras are on his vehicle and the camera showed he did not leave in his vehicle that night, it would be very, very easy, in my opinion, to simply fake an alibi by leaving his phone on next to the TV or some music. And Katie on the other end of the line, he was only three hours and 37 minutes, he said himself, door to door. And it's interesting that they did have this three hour phone call. What were they discussing during this time? So we know Chris, Chris Proudfoot wasn't coming home. This is according to him during the month of February. So what was going on in the house? Why wasn't he coming back? Um, he was only a little over three and a half hours away. This is according to his own statement. So why wasn't he coming home on the weekends? Don't most people who travel for work come home on the weekends? I, most people that I know, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. So we know that Seth and Sebastian were supposed to be moving. We know that according to Seth, Sebastian was supposed to be moving in with him shortly. So there's also been questions about Katie. Would she have to pay Seth child support? Was there any animosity going on between Katie, Chris, and Seth in regards to Sebastian and this change, potential change in custody? How did Chris Proudfoot feel about this. Remember, his finances would be directly tied to Katie's finances. She does work. She or she did. She had a job at Brink Security. But if she was going to have to pay for child, foot, child support, this would affect their finances as well. All right. We have so many packages to dig into. And I have um, a lot of great information for you guys. Let me um, go ahead and start 
uh, taking some questions and we're going to go through those enhanced photos. I enhanced them myself because I just, I told you guys, I don't trust other people's um, enhancements. And I have one, two, three, four other packages to go through besides the photo. So we have five more packages to get through. So I spent a lot of time digging into this because uh, you guys deserve credible information. Um, hello, mama bear. So Deanna wants to know, do phone records show him on the phone for that long? I don't know. That has not been released to us. Um, I have been digging. I did dig today trying to find out if law enforcement had released anything that said we have ruled out Chris Proudfoot because phone records or security cameras. And you'll recall that if you think back to the Quentin Simon case, they were able to, to rule out his biological father because he lived next door to, I believe it was a gas station that had a security camera that literally showed his house so they could see that he had gone in and had not left his house all night, even though Quentin's mom was trying to throw him under the bus. So great question, Deanna. Hey, Denise, I think Chris and Katie, uh, I I don't know. Watch your, Please watch your words in the chat, you guys. Let's keep this um, just like I, if I don't use it on the air, we won't, we won't use it. But yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I have, I know that he admitted, we know that uh, Chris admitted to doing a couple of things. Um, and we know that um, Child Protective Services was uh, involved with Chris Proudfoot. Um, so, and, he, and, and one of the incidences took place because he supposedly lied. This is Sebastian. Now, this is a special needs autistic person, teenager. I just don't think that if he, if he lied, that that would be a reason to have any type of corporal punishment, in my opinion, because Chris Prophet has also lied. And, you know, I mean, people, I just don't, I don't, I think it's just too much. I think it was too much. I think Chris Proudfoot has shown himself to be somebody who not only gets into confrontations, but enjoys getting into confrontations. Again, this is just my opinion. Andrew says, did you see Katie's LinkedIn account? She is a specialist in the U.S. Navy shipping. I Thanks, Andrea. I saw a little bit of somebody's video on it. Um, I did see a little bit about it. I didn't dig into that. If you guys want me to, let me know. I'll dig into that next. Mama Bear says, I think he may have ran away from, so please, something may have happened after that. I, I, that is very possible. He could have, or there could have just been some animosity in the house. Right. If we're going to have a change of custody. And I do believe that Chris Proudfoot is very confrontational. Um, if you're going to have a change in custody and this is going to potentially affect finances and all kinds of other issues are coming about, there could have been some stress and animosity around that. So was there additional stress in the household and why wasn't Chris Proudfoot coming home? I just don't understand why you wouldn't come home to your family. So let's take a couple more questions and then we're going to go start digging into these packages. And I have um, this, these enhanced photos. I'm going to show you the original images, the original circulating on social media images. And then I'm going to show you the images that I enhanced. So you guys can make up your own mind of what you think um, happened here. Stacy said, Seth said if he had run away, he would have been knocking on his door by now. I think. I'm like, I'm leaning that way too. I just think that somebody would have seen him. The fact that he was not picked up on anybody's doorbell cam is, you know, it just seems really strange that he wasn't picked up on any cameras anywhere is, is very, very strange. So uh, yeah, I'm worried about that also. Linda says, I think Sebastian became no longer on February 25th after the Texas Roadhouse restaurant, some restaurant, some fight or argument in the car, Sebastian did not make it home. I don't know. Very interesting theory. Stacy says, yes, my friend's power. Oh, you guys are having thunderstorms. Yikes. Um, Andrea says, from New York, her account says she's wiring specialist and that troubleshoots and installs GPS on battleships. Okay, so that kind of answers the question. Thank you so much for that, Andrea. This is why I love reading you guys' comments because one of the things I was trying to think about before I was talking about Chris Proudfoot and his cell phone and that, that, you know, that's his alibi. But if Katie was familiar with GPS to the point where she troubleshoots and installs GPS on for the Navy, 
Well, then to me, that would say that she would, they would have enough common sense, not for him. If he was going to come home, not saying that he did, don't come for me. This is speculation warning. But if he did come home and his phone is his alibi, to me, it would be very easy to simply just leave your phone on next to the TV. So we've got some sound coming in to the cell phone. Katie's on the other end and he can drive home. I'm not saying he did. I'm just saying, yeah, welcome everybody. Come on in, come on in. We have so much stuff to dig into. I have been researching this case all day today. Stacey said home didn't have security cameras. Yeah, and she worked for Brink Security. And they say that they didn't have lights on the outside, security lights. They did have some carriage lights, I guess, on the side of the garage, but nothing on the front. It's, you know, I don't know. Maybe they live in a really safe area and nothing ever happens there. Katie Stacy says, who doesn't open their kid's door when they hear a thud? I don't know. And thud, thud is an interesting word choice. It's an interesting word choice. John says, it doesn't appear you guys are talking about how Katie is an electronic specialist who may have manipulated the phones or other items. I don't even know if she would need to um, go through all that. All they would have to do to establish an alibi for Chris would be simply have them call him leave the phone on next to the TV or stereo or just her on the line and drive and then go back. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I think it's definitely, I, I, I think it's definitely, I don't even think it takes to be an electronic specialist to be able to manipulate it. It would just take somebody to know a little bit about GPS and maybe how apps work on the phone um, to, to know this. So yeah, great point. Just, I'm, I'm unpacking a lot of information, so just hang on. We're getting to that. I am going to show you images of the photos. So if you can't, if you, if you can't be patient, that's okay. But we're going to get to everything. But I have five packages, and we're going to go through them. Um, right now, I'm going to take some questions from chat because it's social media, and we call it social media for a reason. It's because we're being social. Jane wants to know, did Chris ever take a poly? I wonder, Nancy Grace offered him one. I think he declined. Well, let's go to the video. I, let's, let me, uh, Grab this and share this. Let's see. So let's just go to the source on that. This is Nancy Grace herself on her own interview. Let me make this nice and big. Several years ago, um, and it to was Mr. Proudfoot. On... To Mr. Proudfoot. To. Can you guys see it? I am in the way. That's what I was worried about. Let me add this in. Okay. Yes, I want to find out about Mr. Proudfoot hitting Sebastian with a belt. What happened? Uh, that was actually several years ago. Um, and it to was Mr. Proudfoot, one. to Mr. Proudfoot, to Mr. Proudfoot, Mr. Yes, Proudfoot, what happened? Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I thought you were asking me, Katie. Um, Sebastian had gotten in trouble. He got, got, got caught lying. And we asked, I had asked him, I said, hey, you know, you got to have a punishment for this. He says, yes, sir. And I said, okay. So I gave him a swat with a belt on his buttocks on the. So now we've caught Chris Proudfoot in a lie about the lie detectors. Outside of his clothes, one swat. What did he lie about? At the, I honestly, I don't remember at the time, but it was probably something dealing with school because that's majority where his issues lie. I've got a question for you. Mm hmm. Y'all, this situation has my head spinning. Before we get into it, though, I do. Yes, I want to. Okay. So let me grab this for you guys. 
So that's what happens when Sebastian lies. What happens when Chris Proudfoot lies? All right. So this investigation has taken a shift. Um, we're going to be talking about the Nancy Grace video. Oh. Oh, I lost my link. Hold on. There it is. Okay. Seems like when I take down their thing, it takes down the article. Okay, we're going to have to let that play. All right. So, they went on to Nancy Grace, Chris, and Katie to dispel rumors and clarify facts. We know Sebastian was reported missing February 26th. We know investigators searched the Kentucky landfill. We went through that already. So let's talk about what was actually said. Um, Chris Proudfoot claims he was in Memphis on a business trip when Sebastian was reported missing. Um, I think that's interesting. Um, during the interview, which was posted uh, earlier this week, the parents say that they were in, in an RV. Now, currently, they both moved out of the house, which I think is also very, very suspicious that you would leave your house as a mother and a stepfather when you have a missing autistic special needs teenager. When asked why Sebastian's mother left the house, Katie said it was to accompany her husband back to work. We've learned this is not true because Chris Proudfoot has not gone back to work. So Nancy Grace asked then, are you concerned with being away while your search is ongoing? And Katie said, absolutely, my, but my son could be anywhere. We're looking for him anywhere and everywhere. Okay, so this child did not evaporate. He was not abducted by aliens. He didn't um, get beamed up by Scotty onto the Starship Enterprise. So he didn't just disappear, and he couldn't just be anywhere and everywhere. I just, I'm, I, you know, he's, let's just follow some common sense. And one of the things that to me is common sense is if you have a missing autistic special needs teenager, then you stay at your house in case he comes home. So Chris Proudfoot said, we're in my RV. We're not disclosing our current location just for safety reasons due to, and he's blaming you. He's blaming YouTubers and Facebooks. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I'm, I'm not buying that. I'm not even going to talk about the United Cajun Navy. That's a, that's a whole nother story that I don't know that much about. If you want me to dig into it, let me know. So tracking dogs found Sebastian sent around the retention pond. So they, I, we've heard that they did find the scent. We didn't, they didn't find the scent, but the Proudfoots are saying that they did find a scent. So I don't know if this is true or not true. So Chris Proudfoot said from day one, there were five dogs that started the scent search. And then after that, there have been dogs all over the county that have come in and done searches and had scent hits in various locations. A certain percentage of them tend to go to the same spot, which have, would have been the retention pond. So now this retention pond was only knee deep. This is according to Chris Proudfoot. It was drained during the search. No evidence was found. So we've heard that there were tracking dogs that found a scent. And we've also heard that there were not tracking dogs that found a scent. So Brian Tasher from the United Cajun Navy said that during the interview, the organization also brought tracking dogs, but none of their dogs discovered a scent related to Sebastian. They joined the search for Sebastian about a month after he disappeared. So it could be that the scent went away after a month. I mean, a month is a long time. Um, what do you guys think? So Katie thinks it is possible that someone um, has her son. She said they, they've repeatedly said that they were cleared by law enforcement and that no foul play is suspected. Well, I think that's interesting because today we're learning that this has turned it from a missing persons case into an investigation. So it doesn't seem like anybody has been cleared. Um, maybe that is what law enforcement told them. And then we talked about, they talked about the polygraph and Nancy asked Katie, did you pass polygraph? Katie says that she did. I was asked if I knew where my son was. I was asked if I heard him. I was asked if I heard someone among other questions. So, and then Chris Proudfoot says, who was out of town when Sebastian was reporting the scene said he was not asked to take the polygraph. 
He said he offered and volunteered on many occasions to take a polygraph. And I was told directly by law enforcement, because of my whereabouts, I don't need one. When asked if he would schedule one by Nancy Grace, he said he would. Name the time and the place, I'll be there. Well, he was not there. He did not show up. He was not there to take his polygraph, which I think is very, very interesting. Let me grab the next one. And we are going to be looking at enhanced images of the photos. I did blow those up for you. But I want to talk about this new information that this is shifting. All right, you guys can see that. So this is shifting from into a full-on investigation. I think I'm going to have to be over here for you all to see it. Okay. So we're going to dig into that. So a significant shift in the case for Sebastian Rogers is taking place. Authorities are now calling it an investigation. Okay. My source on this is uh, News Channel 5 out of Nashville. The missing teenager, mother and father, have spoken out publicly for the first time over the weekend. The original thinking was that Sebastian had walked away on his own. But the fact that he disappeared without a trace now has authorities looking at a very real possibility of foul play. There is no security video of Sebastian. There is no trace of Sebastian. So this is the EMA director, Ken Widener. He says, we are used to producing, and this is one of those cases we have not been able to produce yet. So no one is giving up. Sebastian could be alive somewhere hurt, lost, or trapped. He could have been abducted and the search will continue. But I'm, uh, but they're scaling back on the search. So I'm wondering now if they are going to be reapportioning a, a certain amount of assets to not the search, but to the fact that, that this something nefarious happened. So what does this mean? Source is close to the case confirm authorities are now considering foul play and that this missing teen could become a criminal investigation. You guys have all had your gut instincts about this case, um, you know, and, and, and kudos to you. You can tell I've been researching a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of camera stuff today and GPS from the ads that I'm getting. Sebastian's mother and stepfather broke their silence talking about how he disappeared from their home overnight a week ago. Sunday, this was actually back in February, the two spoke on YouTube called Missing Tennessee with Duchess. So wasn't there between the hours of talked gone. This is Chris Proudfoot who's announcing this. So how did the door get locked if he didn't have a key? Did it just lock automatically behind him or did somebody lock the door behind him? Authorities have not named suspects and say that to date parents have fully cooperated with the investigation. So detectives are now going to re-interview and vet everyone. So again, no one is cleared. No one is cleared. Re-interview re and vet everyone who may have had contact with Sebastian looking for consistencies. They are asking you for help. They are asking the public to provide any ring camera videos, not just from Sunday evening when Sebastian disappeared, but of any suspicion from earlier that day. So that tells me that they're not, maybe not convinced on this midnight to 6 a.m. time frame. Anyone with information is asked to call 1-800-TBI. Find, please make sure it's credible tips information and not speculation. Okay, so let me um, check in with chat, and then we are going to dive into the photos. All right. 
<clears throat> this is called social media. So we are, this is interactive. If you want to come in and come up and talk to me, tell me your thoughts. What are you thinking? What do you think about this case? What do you think about this shifting into an investigation and the, the whole thing where they said they were cleared? Were the Proudfoots told that they were cleared maybe to keep them talking? Or did they just tell us that? What do you guys think? DM says, I'm married. I can't think of any instance where my husband and I would be on the phone for three hours. That's weird in my opinion. Well, he was out of town. Um, but yeah, it's it's a long time. You're right. Good point. Stacey said, I've also heard you can't look for something that isn't missing. Chris and Katie aren't looking. I think this is such an excellent point because it they not only aren't um, looking, but they're not at, at the house. They're not at the house. Why wouldn't you be there just in case he came back if you thought he wandered away or someone abducted him? Right? You'd be there. You wouldn't just take off. And in response to the phone call, Andrea says, yeah, when we fought. Yeah, exactly. If you had some kind of a dis dispute or disagreement, then yeah. And then Stacey says, funny how he was also three hours away, right? The exact, almost the exact length of time of the phone call. It is interesting. And it just makes you wonder about the, the time frame. Hello, I'm glad you guys are here. Tell me your questions. Mew says, they don't participate in the search because they already know where he is, probably in Alaska. Well, they did check Alaska. That's what we're hearing. And they were not there. And Jess says, in my opinion, there is foul play. Something awful has happened to Sebastian. I think I, I am leaning toward foul play at this point also. I'm not saying he couldn't have wandered away. I just think that law enforcement would have probably found something. I mean, this has been going on since February. It's now April 11th at the time of that we're having this live stream together. So yeah, and you guys have been so good about getting his name and photographs out there. I just want to commend every single one of you. I've seen so many of you guys sharing information on Facebook, on Twitter, on Reddit, really engaging and, and helping to find uh, this child. This is Autistic Awareness Month and it, April is, and this uh, Sebastian is autistic. So he is special needs. Create Vids Muse says, this is so sad. I agree it is. Translucent said, why is it game over? Did I miss some news? Well, let's look at the photographs and you guys can decide. I'll let you decide if it's game over. I think it's, I think it is. Um, I think the fact that they're changing from a search into an investigation to me is also game over. But we're going to look at the photographs together in just a second. Jane says, no shade to the Cajun Navy either. No, absolutely not. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. So I'm not going to, I just don't want to get involved in that. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I wasn't there. And I, so I just, if you don't know, <laughs> just, just stay out of it. I, uh, don't want to get into that. So DM says, that's just us though. Every couple is different. One of us would have hung up on the other one before three hours. John Winger says, they said they didn't have motion detectors. Thanks for that. So they had their lights on their carriage lights on the side of the house next to the garage, but no motion detector detection lights anywhere. This is despite the fact that she works for Brink security and he was out of town. I don't know. I guess everybody, maybe they live in a really safe area and nothing ever happens. Pam says Cajun Navy should have stayed home. I don't know. I don't, let's, let's leave them out of it. I just don't want to go after them because I don't know what happened and uh, I haven't looked into it at all. So I don't even want to speak on it. Um, Stacy said, Chris also said the garage lights were on all night. How would he have known this if he wasn't there? Great question, Stacy. Hey, Brother Mike, good to see you. Making pizza dough, that sounds delicious. Okay. Leslie says, I know I'm a day late and a dollar short. I believe that mom and stepdad know where Sebastian is. I think they may did something to him. Missy RN says, they never said the motion floodlights were off. They never turned them on. Thanks for that. Appreciate the clarification. Create Vids Muse says, maybe Sebastian ran away and then somebody abducted him. I don't know. Muse says, the police are looking in ponds, landfields, and that, and that not where you look for someone that is, yeah, 
is 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 fine and dandy. You're right. Great point. And if you find it odd that there hasn't been a press presser, they always give the status of the case. Yeah, it is really strange. We haven't heard anything from them directly. We've heard that they've switched the search up from a missing person into a criminal investigation that they're in the process of transitioning over less focused on uh he ran away and more focused on either abduction it could be that they think he abducted was abducted you know again did some did he have access to internet at school or at his dad's house or at a friend's house or something like that i don't know but it's worth considering and, and law enforcement's going to work from the inside out and Andrea says, or Sebastian's electronics were thrown away and hence it was heavy. Oh, wow. Very interesting theory. This is why I love reading your comments, you guys. You have you have such great insights into all of this. And Jess says, I, she agrees with you, Muse. Stacey says, what about the dog that practically dove into the water? Yeah, I heard about that too. I don't know. Um, I I don't know. I, we've, we're getting differing reports on what happened on this. So great question. I'll dig more into that for the next live stream, you guys. Missy says there are two small lights over the garage that are constantly on. That's correct. That's what I understand it as well. Pam says possibly, but I don't think so. John says true, but no motion sensors on them. Thanks for that. Create Vids Muse says, how could he not be recognized if he's out there? Yeah, exactly. We've had his face everywhere. We've had pictures of him with his glasses on, without his glasses on. He has been everywhere. And that, that's why I think law enforcement doesn't feel like he just wandered away. Why is there not one? Nobody picked up anything on the doorbell cam, a ring camera. Nothing got picked up. Was he locked out of the house? Did somebody abduct him? What was the thud at 10 p.m.? Why the word thud? Why was that word selected? I think that's interesting, too. Kay says, parents won't admit to any accident for fear of CPS. Yeah, that's true. That, that, you know, that I can understand that if you had multiple kids, that that would be something that would be worrying for you. But yeah, please give this a thumbs up. It helps me out so much with the algorithm in covering these cases. Patricia says, Chris and Katie are responsible. And give me a break. Thank you for sharing your thoughts on that. Misty says, kids don't just disappear. Grass Monster says, I seem to remember that it is an industrial waste that goes to Kentucky and that Kentucky was searched by because dogs had tracked to a construction site and then lost the scent. Well, I've heard that. And I've also heard that because of the trash, this is according to Seth Rogers. He said that the, that he heard it was they searched the landfill because the trash was reported by the trash guys to have felt heavier that day. Remember, when we saw that trash truck video and I haven't shared it on my channel because there's so much, so much, uh, you can't really tell what's what. Um, and it's been sort of misunderstood of where the trash tr truck was, what was the flashlight. But my understanding now is that the flashlight, because it would have had like a little green light on it, doesn't really even show up in the video. But if you want me to dig into that more, I will enhance that video as well. Um, thank you for welcoming Patricia and Jazz. Stacey says, I imagine them being so mean to him that someone took him and he's not trying to escape. Could be. Cece says, look at her military background. Well, I do think that her background in, C in GPS is very, very interesting. Thanks for that, Cece. K2 Thack, I hope I'm saying your name right. Do, don't know if they have other kids. Uh, Chris does, but they would, CPS would ban Chris from seeing his other kids. Yeah, we saw that in the Summer Wells case, didn't we? Didn't we? Yep. Yeah. Mew says, Chris doesn't even have one photo of Sebastian on his Facebook profile. I think it's another case where mom chose boyfriend over her child. Yeah, and did you hear that she took down, she locked her Facebook today? Once it got announced, it was being moved from um, abduction, uh, not abduction, but run away, wander away, or missing or lost to investigation. She locks down her Facebook. I also think that's very, very interesting. Jay says, Jane says, Katie is strange about all of this, about Chris can't stop talking. Yeah, and he talks for her. But he, according to himself, wasn't there. Missy says, I thought 
If they called the police, CPS would get involved and ruin his upcoming court case. Yeah, that's a, a very interesting theory. Stacy says, and if Chris didn't want Sebastian near Faith, then why did they put their rooms next to each other? Yeah, that's another excellent point. This is why I love reading your comments. You guys bring so much um, really interesting, great questions that I'm sure law enforcement is just going over and over in their minds about this case, just trying to figure out what's a tr what's true, what's a lie, because we know now that Chris Proudfoot lied about lie detector test. We know he got caught in a whopper lie by Nancy Grace. And, um, you know, props to her for getting, for catching him in that lie. So yeah, great question, you guys. Leslie says, Chris's parents went to Alaska after Sebastian went missing. Yeah, what was up with that? Denise says, they should be arrested for negligence well, they have to, they, so here's my feeling on that. A lot of people have been wondering, you know, like, why aren't they doing anything? Why aren't they, uh, you know, arresting him? Why aren't they, why aren't you, they just started the criminal investigation, but I think before anything, and we saw this when the Quentin Simon case, right? We saw them looking and looking for Quentin and, um, they were looking in a landfill for him as well. And it took weeks. It took weeks before they arrested Leilani, right? They they knew that she was not telling the truth and she was trying to throw her his biological dad under the bus. She was saying that he must have come in and taken Quentin, but he had, a, luckily for him, he had a camera right outside where he lived that would have caught him had he entered or exited the home. They were able to, he had an airtight alibi. He had gone into the house and hadn't left the whole time. So yeah. Great, great point, you guys. And everything I'm sharing is my opinion. So I just want to say everything that we are all sharing in this chat is our opinion. John says she doesn't work for the money hauling bank. She works for the camera security brinks. Thanks for that. They still may have a rule about telling your what your car vehicle is. That was the, my only point with that. But very interesting. And it sounds like some of you guys feel like they are involved. I do think that the line has not helped. The line about the lie detector has not helped Chris Proudfoot one bit. And I'm not saying he had anything to do with it or not. Um, he may have a rock solid alibi, but why, why tell Nancy Grace, I'll be there anytime, anywhere, name the place, time and date. And she sets it all up and then he refuses and then says he already took one. And then they call the check and he hasn't taken one. Why are you? you lying about that, Chris. I just want to know if it's something minor. Okay. Then tell us, but don't bald face, come on the air and lie to us. We are doing everything we can to help find Sebastian and this law enforcement and this, and all of the people that are helping to actually look for him, not hiding. They deserve the truth. They deserve facts so they can do what they do best, which is locate people. Jane thinks that Katie is scared to say anything. Yeah, she might be. DM says, I wish the three adults would be a united force. That's bothersome too, in my opinion. Yeah, it is sad. And it makes me wonder if there was, anim if there's this much animosity now, instead of coming together at this point, it makes me wonder what kind of animosity was going on in between these three adults, between Seth and Chris and Katie, what was going on about actually changing custody, that's a big deal, and child support. Child support for a special needs was that coming into play. And why wasn't Chris Proudfoot coming home? Why was he staying in his camper and not coming home on the weekends? It's just, just a lot of red flags, you guys. Andrea says, plus weird that Chris said dogs followed the scent. From the front door to the right side of the house, not the trash side. There's a fence around the backyard, by the way. Thanks for that, Andrea. That's the way the house is built. Two story, two on one side master. Yeah, it's a branch style house. So it has the master and then the two bedrooms. But yeah, if you were really concerned, you could have your daughter stay in, in your room. I mean, there's options, right? Let me just pop down for a second. I'm so behind on the chat. Hang on one second. Okay. 
Let me just back up. Oh. Okay, so we have new people coming in. I do want to just say thank you so much to Olwyn for the super thanks. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. I appreciate appreciate that very, very much. And I want to thank Proving Demon Warriors also for the super thanks. I really appreciate it. I put a lot of research into my uh, live streams and I did spend a lot of time enhancing these photos, which I'm going to show you in just a second. Um, Proving Demon Warrior says his mom still works for the military dealing with security and communications, yet they don't have any security alarms at the house. Yeah, I think that's really unusual. And it could just be that it's such a safe area that they don't need to have have that at the house. I'm not really sure. What do you guys think about that? Stacy says, I mean, they haven't made any arrests for Madeline Soto either. Yeah, that's true. Although the guy is at least, you know, in jail. I can, But it can take time to really get things down. Um, and Jazz says, Sebastian wasn't allowed on social media. Hey, Sergeant, good to see you. Create Bids Music says, the concerning thing is that if he was out there, it has been cold here on and off. Sebastian wouldn't, would get sick with hypothermia. Yeah. And that's another reason why I just don't think he would have wandered out without shoes on, not just fire ants and other problems, but just, you know, it was cold. It was chilly. I just think he would have put his shoes on. I think that's unusual. What do you guys think? Am I off base on that? Half pint says, I finally settled on a theory, at least for now. Yeah. Please share your theories with me, guys. I want to know what you guys are thinking. Um, half Pint says, I finally settled on a theory, at least for now, until more info evidence comes along. Too much to type out here. It would take me two or three messages. Well, feel free to leave two or three messages. I'm very interested to hear your theory. KJ says, this is the first time seeing your channel, and I like your no-nonsense approach, and that you get right to your story. Oh, thank you, KJ. I really appreciate it. Welcome to Reporter Room. I'm so glad you are here. Encyclopedia of True Crime and the Unknown says there was a landfill in Tennessee searched too, according to some locals. I live in Northwest Tennessee and plan on going to help the search. Thank you for that tip. I will follow up on that and see what I can find out. Hello, Amber. Glad to see you guys. Jane wants to know, does anyone know if Sebastian gets, a, gets social security? I would imagine that he would. And again, would this play a role? If we are having, you know, Seth saying that this, that Sebastian was coming to leave with him and we have Chris and Katie Proudfoot with Chris working out of town, living in a camper and Katie working from home for Brink, for Brinks, was there not only child support involved, but were there benefits that came along with Sebastian, social security benefits that also would have come into play that would have gone to Seth and out of the Proudfoot home? Was this causing disruption and dispute. Was there an argument about that? And Sebastian ran out the door and did somebody just close the door behind him thinking he'll just throw a fit and come right back. And then he didn't come right back. I don't know. What do you guys think? Okay. Rangers forever says everywhere has cameras these days, except in the right places. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. The only good, the, the, there are several good things that are working though, that, that in my opinion are going to help. One is that these the, the tracking on these cell phones, and they we do know from Chris Proudfoot that they did they do have his phone. They, they can pick up a lot of stuff on the phones, the cell phone, phone tower pings. Now, I do think that if Katie has a background working in the Navy with GPS, then he would have been smart enough not to bring the phone had he returned to the house. Again, speculation warning on that. Um, Olwyn says that he thinks it's foul play. Yeah, I agree with that, Doomer. I, I don't think it was just once. I, I agree with that. Just in looking at his demeanor and how argumentative and combative. And then that interview that I showed you guys day before yesterday where he and Katie, they're just holding hands and just rubbing hands the whole time, but they wouldn't go on camera. It's just, it's weird. It's, I'm sorry, but it is. It's weird. Rachel thinks he's lying. He knows something. Italiano says, have they checked to make sure Chris parents didn't take him to Alaska? My understanding is that they did check today when they switched from missing to investigation, but we'll find out more. Encyclopedia says Madeline Soto's alleged perpetrator isn't going anywhere. They've got, they've, they're deep concrete evidence against them so they can, yeah, get, make it a capital case. I agree. Thank you so much, Amber. Yeah, please, please make sure to like, 
subscribe, share, um, help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And Jazz agrees with you, Olwyn. A lot of people agree with you. Okay. Prying Paula says, the first instinct of any mother would be to call 911 before calling anyone else, in my opinion. Katie did not do that. Yeah, that's another thing that really sets off a lot of red flags for a lot of you guys is the fact that she called Chris, which I that I understand, you know, she's looking for him. She's frantic, so she calls him. It could be at that point he was back at his house. Remember, nobody saw Sebastian. This timeline of... 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. was created by Katie Proudfoot. I'm not saying she's not telling the truth on that. I'm just saying that that timeline came from her. Um, so why when she realized he was missing, she calls Chris Proudfoot. But again, was this alibi building or was she just, you know, really frantic and wanted to call him? And she's looking for him. Why not enlist some of your family? If you have family in town, and we know they did because they had spent dinner the night out before together with family. They'd gone shopping with, with uh, Chris Proudfoot's sister. Why not enlist them to help you look? Also, and, and, and then Chris calls the sheriff, not Katie, and conferences her in. I just think, you know, just a little bit of red flags there. Why wouldn't you call 911? Is it because you didn't want a recording of your reporting the call? Or they just, you know, because looking, calling 911 would be a lot faster and easier than looking up the sheriff office phone number. I don't know. What do you guys think? <clears throat> Cole Cola says, Katie isn't scared of Chris Proudfoot since she's had military training and is a martial arts teacher. Interesting. Uh, Create Vids Music thinks he does get social security. I would imagine that he does. And we're going to look at those photos in just a second. I enhanced them. Um, I have I showed you the original ones that were circling on social media. And Kim says there are so many contradictions by the proud. I know people are saying proud feet, but I'm just saying proud foot. Uh, firstly, Katie working for Brink and being privy to surveillance tells me in during, during one of the first interviews when asked about surveillance video from. Yeah, I agree. Grandma took him when she drove to Alaska. That's what Colleen thinks. Thanks for sharing your theories on this, guys. All right, so let's go through this. the photos. Let me move myself out of the way. Okay. Can you guys see those? All right, so what I'm showing you now, this is the image that was circling around on the internet. Okay? This was what was circulating on the internet and it's being purported that these little marks that you can see on Chris Proudfoot, that these are bite marks. So what I wanted to do, because I've been punked before by people creating stuff, adding images on an overlay. I've been punked once before on, on an audio um, thing that was purported to be and even they even had manipulated a news article to, to support the fact that they like changed the news article on the, the headline on what they showed on their, on their uh, channel. So I'm like always suspicious. So this is what's been purported to be circulating, circulating on the internet. But let me just have you guys look for yourselves, decide for yourselves what you see. So that's the one that is not my image. This is somebody else's image. Okay, this is the original image. I simply just cropped it from Chris Proudfoot and to get the arms into the image. Okay, so you can, I just want you guys to see it. So that's the original image with the arrows just pointing to where the other photograph had circled. That's the original image. There's enhanced image. Okay, what do you see? So the, I, I enhance these with a variety of different, uh, different ways, different filters, different images. These are the enhanced images that I did myself personally. So you can see here the arms. 
And then you can hear I zoomed in on both of the arms. I use multiple filters. I'm going to show you that. And you guys can just let me know in the comment section what you see. Do you see? I see marks. But I don't know what they are. What do you guys think? I don't want to say what I think they are because I want you guys to decide for yourself. One of the things we do here on Reporter Room is I bring you information. And so you guys can make up your own mind. I'm not here to tell you what to what to think, what to believe. This is a critical thinkers channel. We have some of the smartest viewers on YouTube and you guys are smart enough to make up your own mind. Okay, so that's one enhanced. I use multiple different ways to edit the images to show you different enhancements. Okay, so this one you can see I'm using the same headline. So you can see I put a different filter on it. Again, enhanced it. What do you guys see? Let me back it up a little bit. So that's the one filter. That's another more enhanced. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. I want to know what you think about this. This is a different filter. Okay. And on this one, I used almost an x-ray sort of like filter to try to just really get in on those marks. <clears throat> and I'm going to play this what, what, all the way through without talking one more time. And this is a different filter now. What do you, what do you see? I do see marks, but I don't, I'm not going to characterize them. I want you guys to tell me what you see. All right, I'm going to play this back one more time for you, just so you can look at everything and decide for yourselves what you see. Please let me know. So this is the original image that was circulating on the internet. This is not my image, and I wanted to do my own because I don't, I don't trust stuff on the internet. Here we go. That's the original image. That's enhanced. And I used a variety of different filters for you guys to look. Let me just pause this so you can see I've zoomed in on each of the arms. Let me know in the comment section what you see. This is a different filter. I do see marks. They are horizontal. And I wanted to do this so you guys could could definitely see, like, just see that the marks are horizontal. I don't know. They could just be scratch marks from, from a dog or a pet. Could be bite marks. What do you think? And I think this one is... To me, this is one of the more interesting ones. I just want to back it up a little bit. This one, I just wanted to show you with a variety of different filters. But this, I definitely do see marks here. Now, it could just be, I don't know, you know, if I, how I would characterize those. But I do see marks. could just be from a dog could be something that happened after so just curious what you guys think about that let's go uh, go to the comments and then we're going to do i have one more package to do with you guys um but this is social media so we're definitely going to do some social on our social media i'm so glad you guys are here with me today if you haven't subscribed please do like share leave a comment 
Um, if you would like anything you want me to look into, leave me a comment in the comment section below. I will, last week you guys wanted me to, in, to look at the photos. So we did that today. If you have anything you want me to dig into, I will dig into it on your behalf. Just let me know what you guys want me to, to look into next. Andrea says, whoa, my mind is now connecting Katie and Catherine Bauer socks, both Navy specialists. There might be a scheme going on here. Crying Paula says, I agree. I don't think Chris controlled Katie either. Kim says, hey, Kim. She says, inside the home, he said she couldn't answer that. Lisa says, there's so much misinformation. Yeah, there is. I agree. We're trying, we're trying to sort through it as best we can, sorting out the, you know, but there we are doing, a, we are going to have a conversation about this case. Uh, we are going to get Sebastian's name out there. Um, Janice says, I wonder if Katie is scared of Chris. I don't know. Um, Maria, hey, Maria says, I pray Sebastian can be found soon and charges can be made. Justice for Sebastian and green hearts for Sebastian. And April is Autism Awareness Month. Let me put up a picture of Sebastian. Okay just so we have him up there. Jane says, Seth told Vinnie Politan about Chris having left him out of the loop. That's suspicious as well. Wow. DM says, reminds me of Mark Twain quote, when you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. Yeah, right? You don't have to remember anything if you're telling, if you're speaking the truth. And we've already caught Chris Proudfoot Nancy Grace did. I don't want to say we because I didn't do it, but he's already been caught in a big lie on in by the media, by a, by a journalist. Leslie said, I believe there's foul play. I believe it was done by Katie and Chris, but they are innocent until proven guilty. Agree with you. Yeah, we are just sharing our opinions here. All of us are. And opinions are not facts. Um, Carol Mary says, I'm just puzzled as to why they had to do anything to Sebastian. They should have just lent him to his dad's. He just wanted him and wanted to live with him. I don't know if they did anything or if it was, you know, there was some, something else. I mean, Peter Hyatt's done a statement analyst analysis on, um, Katie Proudfoot. I thought it was really interesting. If you haven't checked it out, you probably will want to. Um, he's a really good statement analyst here. And if you don't know who he is, he did the, um, Madeline McCann case. He was the one that Richard D Hall hired to come in and do statement analysis on, one of the early interviews, and that's how he became somewhat um, famous, was through Richard Hall's series on the Madeline McCain case. So, you know, yeah, it's it's very, very strange. Encyclopedia of True Crime says, Chris staying at a job site isn't unusual for traveling construction employees. Thanks for that. But why not go home ever? I just wonder. Like, I do think that's weird. Like, you wouldn't go home for a whole month. I can see staying there for the week. But why? If you're only three and a half hours away, three, three minutes, three hours and 30, 37 minutes door to door. That's what he said. Right. Then why not go home? Why aren't you going home sometimes? I just don't get it. Um, Missy Aaron says, because he three-way called Seth and he couldn't handle marriage problems and Sebastian's problems too. Yeah, could be. It could have been some kind of disagreement or dispute. Most in the middle said, <clears throat> Chris Proudfoot on the phone with Katie. Chris Proudfoot said, lock, lock the door. Sebastian gets hypothermia, confused, and falls into the pond. I'm watching my words. And they make a pact. That to me, you know, just listening to the analysis that was done by Peter Hyatt, who feels like it wasn't something intentional, but something went off the rails some, somewhere. And then maybe, you know, it's always in the cover up. That's where people get caught. It's in the cover up. Lisa says, Seth and Katie shared custody, no child support. Thanks for that. So just social security income then. So who was going to get that if he changed houses? Was it a point of contention? Were Seth and Chris both were Seth and, and Chris both, um, you know, supporting Katie and Sebastian on this decision? What do you guys think? Kim says, I totally think they're lying. And there was a Brink sign in their front garden. Rachel says, if he, Sebastian and his own child, I imagine Katie could be also, I'm watching my words. Wow. 
Coffee Bar Lady says, there was no child support agreement between the parents. If Sebastian needed something, Katie let Seth know, and he sent money for it according to Seth. So there was social security income, it sounds like, but no child support. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for to our mods, you guys. Hey, Catherine, welcome. I'm so glad you're subscribed. Welcome to Reporter Room. We're happy to have you here as part of the Reporter Room family. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, Misty Blue, what a pretty name, says it wasn't that cold. He could have made it a lot longer than in one of those nights with the lower temps. It was February, so I don't know like what the temperature was at night. That's something that would definitely be worth looking up. I'll look it up for the next one. Uh, Half Pint thinks that's why I think she accidentally, quote, went too far. Cole Cola says, I think Katie is the primary suspect, bullies Chris into helping her. Oh, wow. Elmer says, for weeks, Seth said nothing derogatory towards Katie and Chris. He is in the video saying Katie and Chris had nothing to do with Sebastian missing. Katie and Chris cut off communication and... Chris Proudfoot then threatened Seth. Oh my gosh. You know, I, you would think this would like bring people together. You know, it'd be nice if they had like a united front and they were all, you know, doing, doing the looking for Sebastian. And I think this is probably, you know, what's made law enforcement, um, you know, concerned about this. So yeah, I understand, you know, why law enforcement would feel a little bit worried, would feel sick. Uh, so, uh, worried about this. Amber says, let's share this live. Let's get it to 2000 viewers. I don't know if I've ever had a live with 2000 viewers before. That would be something, something unique for me. Um, Encyclopedia of true crime says, I'm not surprised about no security system. I'm in rural Northwest Tennessee and security systems aren't common. That's what I'm wondering too. If that's just really not that big of a deal. The, the thing that to me is the big deal, um, is the fact that there are no people do have doorbell cams, right? Most, a lot of people, not all, but a lot of people have doorbell. Cams. The fact that no doorbell cams, nobody's security footage, not just there, the fact that they didn't have it, but that nobody's security video, there's no footage of him. This was a special needs teenager. And I, you know, would he be able to evade every single security camera? I don't think so. I don't think so. So now law enforcement is asking all of you, please share this on your socials. Law enforcement wants everyone to not just look at that, at the time frame that Chris and Katie, they didn't put it word it this way, but they not just to consider the time frame that Chris and Katie have given, which is that 9 PM when she last saw him to 6 AM that morning there, they want to see any video footage before that before that time frame. So they're asking everybody to check their doorbell cams. Please spread this on social media. Let's get the word out there because even in the Gabby Petito case, it, it took a little bit and we were, and red, white and Bethune had all this dash cam footage that they had filmed for their YouTube channel. And it we didn't find out that they had it on the, had the van on the dash cam until probably a few weeks after law enforcement had put out the please check all your security camera footage. They just didn't realize they had picked up the van till they were going through the footage to in editing for their YouTube channel. So somebody may have something just before that time frame, and they don't even know what they have. And this is why law enforcement wants to see it, you guys. Um, where am I at? Rosanna says they've got to check around the house. I bet he's buried there. Oh my gosh. Whew. I don't know. I would think that the dogs would have picked up on that. I, I, I can't, I can't, I like, I can't, I'm like struggling to wrap my head around that. Gosh, Rosanna, thanks for sharing your thought on that. I, I hope that's not the case. I just, I want, I want to, I still want, want a positive outcome. I mean, we have had to, people where a lot of suspicion has fallen on the parents. And then we find out later that it was, uh, it was somebody, you know, a stranger, right? Well, who is the little girl in, in Australia? Remember what, you know who I'm talking about? She was like a, a missing child and she was like two years old or something. 
Cleo, Cleo Smith. Remember Cleo Smith? And people were looking at her parents and because she went missing from inside a tent, inside a tent in a campground. And people were like, well, how does she go missing from inside the tent? And the parents don't know it. Well, it turns out somebody that her, you know, photo had been shared on social media by probably her family and somebody had gone in. The perpetrator had then come fixated on her. And while the parents were asleep in the tent, he came in and lifted up and like slid a little hole in it and, and just slid her out. Cause people were like, she would have cried. This would have happened. That would have happened. So, um, nickel for a pickle says my sons and ex-husband work in construction. They always went to bed early because they had to be on the job early. Why would Chris be on a three hour call? Great question. And I think that's like something that is raising a lot of red flags for people. Um, just for, you know, for you guys in particular, where people just do really feel concerned that why, why were they on this three hour call? Were they on a three hour call or was the cell phone placed next to a radio or TV and Katie was on the call and Chris three hours and 37 minutes door to door. I don't know. I hope I'm wrong. Leslie said a loud thump would have sent me in to see what happened. Yeah. A lot of people have said that too. Susie says unconscious and carried out. Yeah. What made the loud thump? And jazz says, I, hello. Oh, she's saying hello. <laughs> Sorry. Head jazz. Jane says, they all leave in the middle of the night, no shoes, no jacket. Right. That's that's the part that I feel like there's something nefarious going on. I just think just with what we've learned from his dad, the fact that this he did have this incident with these red fire ants. So why would he have gone out of the house in February, in February, without shoes? without socks. It just seems like it would have been cold. You would have come right back in. Or did he go out? Was there some kind of an argument in the house? He went out and the door got locked behind him. I mean, but why wouldn't, why has, have, didn't anybody's doorbell cam pick up on him? Kim says Seth's last proof of life for his son is surveillance video leaving the restaurant. Nobody can identify who took the garbage out. Yeah, I think that's what I do. I did hear him say that. And I think that needs to be considered. And that's why law enforcement now is asking for any doorbell cam, not just from that 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. time frame that they were originally given. They're asking for doorbell cam security camera footage from before that, from before that, as this turns into a criminal investigation. And we are definitely headed in that direction. Welcome, Susie. Thanks, Sanchez. Carol says, I think we all know by now he did not run away. When anyone runs away from home, backpack or something, they would put their shoes on. He was smart enough to do that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you so much, Create Vids Music. It's, uh, this is all you guys. This isn't me. This isn't me. This is you guys. This is you guys caring about this autistic teenager. You guys have good, we have good hearted, caring people who do really care what happened to him. KJ says, I think Chris lied about the lie detector to confuse the case. Don Wells did that in a lot of the summer Wells case. Brother Mike said, Proudfoot's area wasn't so safe not to need lights or camera. Look at what happened. Yeah, that's true. Italiano 62 says Katie did it. Chris is covering for her. Both guilty people always want to blame the man, but he is just as bad. Thank you for sharing your uh, thoughts on that. Everything we're, we are sharing guys is opinion uh, and opinions are not facts. And, and that includes me. Um, Missy says, did I hear they towed the work van away? I have not heard that. <clears throat> Let me check. Let me see if I can find a uh, sourcing on that. I don't see anything that if, that confirms that. So I don't have any like good sourcing on that. But I do want to share this with you guys. Let me make myself small here. Okay. You guys should be able to see that. Okay. So now I want to talk about uh, Seth Rogers. 
So he reveals that his son told him he didn't want to go home before his disappearance. I think this is very telling. Also, my sourcing on this is the independent. Let's listen in. Sit there and was has told me he doesn't. Let me back this up so y'all can hear. said to you or tried to communicate to you abuse in the home. This is Nancy Grace no. with Seth Rogers. He's, he's really? on multiple occasions sit there and was has told me he doesn't want to go back. And I've asked him, why don't you want to go back? And he won't, he wouldn't tell me. He didn't say why. He was just like, I just, I just don't want to go back. And it's, you know, at that point in time, I'm, I'm just like, okay, well, maybe it's the freedom that he gets at my house. And he's, and that's what makes me wonder, was he, was part of that freedom, internet access? And I'm not, it's certainly not blaming his dad for this or any family member for this, but could that have included access to the internet that he maybe didn't get in his own home? We know Chris and Katie Proudfoot have told us he did not have access to the internet. Would he have had access at Seth's house? Even unbeknownst to Seth, could he have gotten access? He's a teenager. And now I'm finding right. out a lot of this stuff and it's... I wish you had told me. That just makes my heart break. So you can tell how much the dad cares on that. Um, so he literally cried on, on the show um, that his, you know, Sebastian had told him he didn't want to go back. So what was going on in the house in the, in the weeks leading up to February 25th? So law enforcement was initially telling us that there was no evidence of foul play and, th and that all three parents had cooperated with the search. However, as I shared with you earlier in this live stream, um, they are now switching it into a investigation. And so was there an abduction that took place? Did he have access to any type of social media at school at his, maybe not at Chris and Katie's house, but at school or maybe somewhere else. Um, in the interview last month, the Proudfoots were questioned about a report that the stepdad had used a belt. I'm watching my words. Um, and this is where, you know, he gets caught in this big lie uh, about, <laughs> about the lie detector test. Um Seth, and I'm talking about Chris Proudfoot here, not Seth Rogers. So Seth Rogers also told Nancy Grace that he experienced, had experienced people trying to stop the search for his son, including people following him and volunteers trying to intimidate him. Others, meanwhile, took down flyers with Sebastian's face on it. Why would somebody do that? And he said, somebody doesn't want me to find my son. So who would be following around this dad and taking down taking down his photos. Let me check back in with chat. Elizabeth says, my mom lives in a safe neighborhood, but a, but a squirrel so much as walks by, she'll be notified with a video from anywhere she is. Yeah, and a lot of people have the video cameras. Let me scroll down. I got like really behind on chat. Let me back up a little bit. And sorry, I scrolled down. And I ended up all the way to the bottom. Okay. Elmer says last proof of life that the public knows for a fact is Sebastian leaving the restaurant with Katie. Everything beyond that is Katie's made up story. So I don't know if it's made up or not made up, but it certainly is worth noting that the timeline that we have is only according to one person <clears throat> who may or may not have a vested interest in what happened. Micro Kimmy says, I got cameras on every wall of the exterior of my house. Lynette says, if he ran away, he also would have packed some of those snacks they brought in earlier the day. Katie said he likes his snacks. And Jaws, thank you so much for the super sticker. She says, you work so hard. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you. That means so much. Thank you so much. And jazz. Tennessee Z3 
nine three says, I think it's odd that an autistic kid walking around barefoot in 25 degree weather wasn't noticed by anyone, no matter the time of night, especially when garbage trucks are driving around the street. Yeah, great, great point. Wise Gal says, didn't police already confirm Sebastian taking out the trash? Well, we have the trash book, tr the trash truck video, but Seth Rogers said this week, he said that he was shown the video. This was on Dave Pascal's show. He was shown the video and he could not identify it as being Sebastian. So that's how grainy and, and, and bad the video was. So no, we, we don't know that that was Sebastian that took out the trash. We just know somebody took out the trash. Half Pint says there's still, no, it's still there. It was rumored towed, but confirmed later. The van is still there. Sharon says, hey, Sharon, I'm sure law enforcement knows more than what we think. Marie says, that's what I said. Most in the middle says, yo, I got notice here. People have 360 camera coverage that gets roads, yards, the whole works. Yeah, we need, then law enforcement now is changing what they're asking for. They're changing what they're asking for. They, they are shifting this from a missing person into a investigation. So I, it's leaning to me, it's starting to lean more toward into the criminal investigation. I feel like that shift has started to happen. They pulled back the search on the missing and now are putting more time and resources into a criminal investigation. So was he abducted? Was he on the internet? Was he on social media at school or at a friend's house or at, at, at somebody else's house? Was somebody else sharing his images? I mean, if you think about Cleo out of Australia, Cleo Smith, she obviously wasn't on social media sharing her own images, right? But somebody was sharing her images on social media, like we all, you know, we all do with our kids, with our grandkids. And so did some with our nieces, nephews, somebody was sharing her image. I don't know who it was. And, and this guy, this weird guy became fixated on her. So he wasn't, he did follow Cleo's mom on social media, but she didn't follow him. So it could be something like that, you guys. Doomer says, if the boy isn't found, what's the next move? Well, that's why they're shifting into a criminal. I feel like they have looked and looked and looked, and they are making their next move, which it's shifting now. So now it's going to be cell phone tower dumps, um, re-going through all of the interviews and interrogations that they, or maybe they haven't conducted interrogations, but going through the additional interviews, looking for inconsistencies. Um, thank you to all our mods. You guys are so great. The OG of the true crime, the final boss. I'm assuming you're talking about Nancy Grace there because I know people, some people like her, some people don't like her, whether you like her or you don't like her. She is the OG. She was doing true crime before we had the name true crime. So she is the original on that. Crave Yed's Muse thinks you are very generous. I concur with that. They have no, they have confirmed nothing as far as camera footage. No, and they're asking, they're asking you guys to help get the word out there. They're asking for camera footage from before 9 p.m. Before they were looking for camera footage in that time frame, 9 p.m., until 6 a.m. that morning when Katie said that she went in to wake up Sebastian. He wasn't in his room. So now they're asking for camera footage from before 9 p.m. Anything in the hours leading up to, to this rather than he just wandered out. Jane is welcoming Sharon and Marie. Rebby. Hey, Rebby. Good to see you. Their vehicles, house, cell phones have all been searched. Thanks for that. Thanks, and Jazz. PNW says, that's interesting. Thought I haven't heard anyone mention this. Did that recently happen? Shoes being thrown out. I haven't heard about shoes being thrown out. I just heard they weren't being worn. They weren't worn. Uh, Deborah says, prayers for truth and safe return. Yes, I agree. And I, I agree. I still have hope. You know, Cleo, they didn't think they would find her. They started doing cell phone tower dumps and they found her. And remember when Charlotte disappeared and Charlotte Senna and, you know, she disappeared off her bike in a campground and they started dumping cell phone towers and they started digging in and they, they were able to recover her. She was safe. She was, had been abducted. So where are you from? Does keypad locks record 
time or frequency. I don't know. Let me look. Let's see what it says. And it depends on the lock. It depends on the lock. So it, it varies from lock to lock. It depends on what, um, it depends on what you have. Let me just share this. Okay. So this is just the pros and cons of them. Um, how do they work? They are a modern alternative to traditional locks, providing ease and a higher level of security for homes and offices. While the core functionality of these locks is to secure your front door, the mechanisms by which they operate are diverse and use the latest technology advancements. So they have, there's different locks. And so different locks are going to record different things. We know like in a hotel room, it does record when you exit or leave the room. So enhanced security, let's consider that. Um, they are tough. They're hard to, to break into. Gives you a more robust security system. You can set a time code with, with a set of code for people to get in and out, but with time on it. But they are vulnerable to hacking. So I think that's interesting. Um, no device is immune to hacking. Keyless door locks are no exception. Smart locks that use wireless signals are susceptible to cyber criminals who intercept signals or exploit software flaws to protect your home. You want to make sure you get your security lock from a credible source. So I don't see anything that tells me if it what it records. Well, that's such a great question. If you want me to, let me know. I'll dig into it some more. I do want to go through the photos one more time because I see some new people are joining. So this is the original image that was circulating on social media. This was not my image, but what I wanted to do was take my own imaging and enhance it for you guys. I put a number of different filters. I did close-ups, zoom-ins. So this is the original photo that's been circulating on social media that I downloaded off of Facebook. And then that is purported to show Chris Proudfoot's arms with bite marks. And you can see there's like little marks. So I enhanced my own. So I just knew that it wasn't being tampered with and nothing was being laid over. And this is what we found. That's the original image, not enhanced, just blown up a little bit bigger. That's enhanced. You can see the filter I put on it. So on this one, you can see I have the arms here, but then I enhanced each arm here and I put a number of different filters on it. For those of you that are just joining us, if you've already seen this, I apologize if you haven't seen it and you're just joining me. I do see there's people coming in. I just want to share this with you. What do you guys think? This I thought was very interesting. Um, this filter. I don't know if, if I would say these are, this is the, the image and then this is blown up. I don't know if these are teeth marks or not. What do you guys think? But I did spend a lot of time enhancing these for you guys today using a number of different techniques and filters. Uh, this is, you can tell the, I, what I did was leave it, left it on the same background so you could, so I wasn't hiding anything from you. So you could clearly see what the filters were. To me, this does look like I do see little marks. I just don't know if they're scratches, but they, they look very square. Well, this could be two front teeth and two incisors. I don't know. What do you think? <clears throat> so what do you guys see? Tell me what you see. I, I want to like, if you, if you think they are scratches, put a one in the chat. If you think they are, so maybe it was just a dog. If you think they are teeth, put a two in the chat. Let me know what you guys, what you think. Let's do a poll.
So I'm really curious what you guys think. What do you see? Let's see what let's see what the let's do a little informal polling. Let me go back down here and let's see what you guys what you guys think it is. Okay. Miss Token says it's a one. So if you think it's scratches, put a one in the chat. If you think it's teeth, put a two in the chat. Or you could just put scratches or teeth. If you think it's neither and it's just, you know, just maybe some old scars or something like that, put a three in the chat. Micro Kimmy says, yes, please not all uppercase. It's very much to rule, to give everybody a chance in the chat to be heard. If you want just contention, unless you'll often read most of the chat. Yeah, I, I do love to read your comments. I do. I love, I love interacting with you guys. I love reading your comments. You guys um, are really smart. That's why I don't want to tell you, you know, what I see. I want to know what you guys see. Leslie says, new subscriber, did the dogs hit on the driveway area where Sebastian took the garbage out? According to Chris Proudfoot, they did. According to other media sources, they didn't. So we have a kind of a mixed bag there. So my my your answer to that is, I don't know. Good question. Great question. And that's really, I think, something that law enforcement is going to be, you know, delving into depending on what the the answer is to that. And we have not had a presser since they've started shifting this investigation from a missing, maybe wandered away, got lost to something more nefarious, criminal investigation. This does not mean that the Proudfoots did anything criminal. I just want to clarify that. Or it could be somebody that, you know, saw his photo on, on social media or became, you know, obsessed with him in some other way. Kay put in a two. Five says, hubby worked at special needs school and was a bit, a lot, in my opinion, looks similar to the bites my hubby, hubby would get on his armchair students. Thanks for sharing that. Raising Grace says one. So one is scratches, two is bites, three is uh, like some scarring or just like, I'll, let's just say three is nothing burger. How about that? Um, crafting with Amy says, Seth said himself that no child support was in place. They agreed to that per Seth. He said he didn't pay any and Katie wouldn't have to pay. They both just provided for him. So I guess that just leaves the question then. Thanks for that, Amy. Was there social security money involved and was there any dispute over that? Andrea says, Chris is 5'9", Sebastian's 5'5". Five five. Those are also 11 days old and the photo could be from Katie too. Yeah, it could be. And it could just be a pet, right? They have dogs. We heard dogs barking in the background. It could just be scratches. You know, dogs scratch a little bit. Could also just be bug bites or scars. He works in construction. So that's why I don't want to tell you. I, I want you guys to tell me what you see. We have a one and a two. If he was in a headlock, defensive bites. Jacob thinks it was a two. Ex-Gothic Breenax says two. Tennessee Z393 says, I do not believe anyone close to him was involved. I truly believe someone new in his life or accident or cover up took place. Thank you for sharing that. Kimmy thinks it's teeth. Teeth. Both. You think it's scratches and teeth. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't give a both option. Thanks for that, Cheryl. This is why I love reading your comments. Um, Joanne thinks it's teeth. Maria thinks it's both teeth, teeth. Thank you so much to our mods. Mike thinks it's scratches. He cannot tell. Leslie thinks it's scratches. Carol Mary thinks it might be teeth. Yes, in a headlock maybe. Teeth, but not from a dog. Three, not sure. Not sure. That's fair. That's absolutely fine. And Jazz thinks it's teeth. Mama Bear says, I don't think he would wear a short sleeve shirt if it was bite marks. Would he? That's a great point. That's a great point. Would you just go on camera? I, you know, great point. Fair point. And, it, you know, he works in construction, so it could just be, it could just be nothing. Cola thinks his teeth, and it, or it could just be the dog. They had, they, we heard the dog, a dog barking in the background during the interview. Alicia thinks his teeth. Bruno says teeth. Cat's Life says it looks like both. Kimmy says the spacing and marks and spacing in his teeth are similar. Holly thinks it's scratches. Five thinks it's teeth. Andrea thinks it's 
scratches. Cindy, this is so good, you guys. So I just want to show all your... I want you guys to are nice enough to do the poll. Let's just show what the results are so the, the viewers can see. A lot of people got quite a few threes also. That people just not sure. Human teeth. Can't see well enough to have an opinion. I enhance it as much as I could. Um, you might try looking on a, a little bit of a bigger screen. Um, most in the middle says, I would want to know if law enforcement saw any marks on any of them that first day he went missing. Yeah, I would too. Hopefully they have body cam footage of when they first responded. I would think that they would. One or two and or two. That's Janet. Thanks, Janet. Would be weird to wear a shirt to show possible evidence. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. That's, I think that's a very, a very legitimate point scratches. This is why I love reading your comments, you guys. All right. Well, I think we got the kind of got the idea on that. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And I do want to say thank you to our VIP, Jane J. These are our channel members, you guys, our producers, George Brown and Jazz and for Amber. And our channel members, if you want to have a check mark by your name and have your name appear in my live streams and in my videos, you just need to hit the join button, which is next to the subscribe button. If you don't want to be a channel member, that's fine too. Please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps me out so, so much. I really am grateful for each and every one of you. I'm going to be doing another Sebastian live stream tomorrow just to answer some of the questions that you guys brought me today. So be on the lookout for that. And I also have a new Idaho 4 video coming out as well tomorrow. And I'm going to do an Idaho 4 live stream. Thank you so much for your super stickers, PayPal, gratitude. Um, this doesn't obviously doesn't include for today. And these for gifted channel memberships, Hush Pup and Jazz, Jane J and Jazz. Very generous of you guys. So thank you so much for joining me today. It's really been an honor and a pleasure to have this opportunity to interact with you and to get to know you guys better. Um, I look forward to bringing you another video on this case tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. And I will see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time, your input and uh, value everything that you guys have to say. And uh, let's see if together we can help bring Sebastian home and bring closure for his loved ones.